Andy, congratulations on your Juno nomination. This is the first time you and I get to meet, and for folks who, uh, who are watching this whole thing on Reedy Blair Entertainment Media, the second we saw each other and started to talk, we were like jostling back and forth. It's like we've known each other for years, but the most important thing, man, is for years people are always going to know whether win or lose, you're going to be a Juno nominee. How does that feel, my friend? Uh, it's sticking to me like glue right now. You know, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it, and it, it's kind of one of those things. My first time being nominated, so I'm having a good time thinking about it. And I think it's also it allows me to reflect on a lot of stuff because I, I've spent most of my professional, almost all my professional career in the United States. So, mm-hmm. been growing up in Canada, so it's it's kind of an interesting reflection on where I've come from and where I am. You know? well, let's talk. Well, I want to talk about the career itself, you know, and, and jazz music and, and why jazz music. I mean, I don't know if I know why, other than I just love the music, and it kind of like I, I was drawn to it from an early age, and so I've been with it, you know, for as long as I've played the piano, almost, you know. And, and but well, wait a second, what was the first part you asked me that? No, no, that's I'm, okay. tri- I'm tripping on you. No, 45. no, that's I'm no, it's on not. Your 45 thing. No, no, don't over no, the. I'm dipping, <laughs> dipping your 45 thing. <laughs> what he's talking about is something I've got over uh, as a chain around my neck. And basically, if you're old school, you're gonna know what it is. If you're new school, you're gonna be going, is that a donut or something? Or anything? It almost looks Klingon. It's great. It's it's because it's like the way it's done, you know. Thank you so much yeah. for that. But who were some of the artists that influenced you? Oh man, if I go back to the very beginning, it was like I I grew up listening to Oscar Peterson. I grew up listening to Duke Ellington. I grew up listening to Les McCann. My brother-in-law, he kind of was the one that turned me on to, to like jazz when I, when I was a really young kid. He got me a few recordings to get me started. And I remember this Les McCann, Eddie Harris, Swiss Movement record that was one of the first records I had. Some Duke Ellington, some, some Oscar Peterson, and he was like a huge mentor. I studied with him. It became, you know, a big part of my sort of early relationships with the music. And then I kind of went on to really explore artists that were working with rhythm in different ways that, um, you know, it, it, you know, kind of using other cultures in, in more direct ways than perhaps what is, is normally understood in jazz. So, I, but I, I studied with a lot of great musicians here in Toronto, like uh, David Maud and, and, and John Giddens and people like that. And then, and then when I went to New York, I was working with Steve Coleman and he had a huge impact on my music because he... You know, he brought me in. It was a very formative time in my career, so I, he brought me into his circle and kind of studied with him and, and, and was in his groups and, and learned a lot about his rhythmic concepts. And so from there, I kind of branched out and got interested in a lot of music beyond jazz. But I started kind of, you know, getting corrupted that way, you know. <laughs> well, the corruption got you here. What's the Juno nomination and uh, what is it for? What, uh, what album? The album is called The Seasons of Being, and it's a record with my group Dap Theory that I've had for probably about 20 years now. And uh, it's a kind of a very really ambas- ambitious project because I basically took the, the core group and I added like five guest um, improvisers into the core group and so I wrote it much more kind of or- almost orchestral in a way. Okay, I'm going to jump in. When you say, what was, um, is, is this more like, you know what you want to do, but it's almost like when you're recording, whatever comes out, we're going to go, hey, we like this, we're going to hold on to it kind of thing? Or? Oh, no, no, complete opposite. Okay. No, this is something that I've been building up from almost 10 years, a concept that I was working on for writing for individual people. Mm-hmm. So I was studying individual musicians to understand them from an emotional point of view. And I partnered with a homeopathic healer, and I we did a whole bunch of took a bunch of information from each person and studied them like to you know really understand what makes them tick, yeah. And try to optimize the music for them. So when they're improvising, they're improvising in a situation that was kind of built for them. Please tell me this is on video somewhere we can see maybe on YouTube or something. There's a couple tracks that are up on video. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, look, man, you got to head to London as we speak in another week or so. Are you ready? Because we don't know what the weather's going to be like. It could be freezing, or whatever else. I, I mean, hey, I got to go back to New York tomorrow before, <laughs> and then go to Michigan before I go to before I go to London. You're getting prepared. So, yeah, it's traveling. Yeah, traveling is prepared. I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it, man. Uh, for folks who want to get in touch with you and you know your music and stuff like that, social media is the place to go. Where do we go? Yeah, probably the quick stop is just to go andymillen.com. From there, you could branch out, but that's sort of like one-stop shop. Fantastic. Look, yeah. my friend, I will see you in London. Congratulations on this and all the success for you in 2019. Thank you very much.